amine inversion and chiral molecules with no chiral centers. We're combining two shorter lessons into one here. Uh, we're getting towards the end of our chapter on isomers and stereochemistry, and really the only thing left after this is a brief lesson on optical activity. Now, if this is your first time joining me, so my name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to make science both understandable and maybe even enjoyable. Now, this is my brand new organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you don't want to miss one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications. You'll be notified every time I release a new lesson. All right, so a couple of oddities in this chapter, and the first one is what's called amine inversion. So if you look at an sp3 hybridized nitrogen here, so typically nitrogen has three bonds and a lone pair, and it turns out that, you know, we talked about a, a, a chiral center as being an atom with four different groups attached. Well, it turns out a lone pair of electrons can actually be one of those groups just not typically with nitrogen. So turns out amines uh, undergo a process called inversion, where the entire uh, stereochemistry flips to the other side and the lone pair ends up on the other side of the nitrogen. And it's just flipping back and forth. It turns out that the activation energy for this process is super low. And so at any kind of like even room temperature, or even quite a bit lower temperatures, this just readily happens. And so it turns out you can't have one of these enantiomers without the other one. And so it turns out they, they kind of went through and, and defined the world chiral a little bit different to take this into account. And they said chiral is when a molecule and its mirror image are non-superimposable and can't readily be interconverted between each other. So in the solution or something like that. So in this case, these are not defined as chiral due to this process of amine inversion. Now, a couple things you should know. So if the nitrogen has, you know, got bulkier groups attached, or if I've got fairly small ones here, if they've got bulkier groups or part of a ring or something like that, this probably is not going to happen. And how bulky is bulky? I don't really have a great answer for that. There is, you know, there's not like a, oh, let's cut it off right there. So however, if you do see a nitrogen that's part of a ring, this is generally not going to be able to happen and stuff like that. So, um, but just something to be aware of here. And... If you kind of drew the analogous structure with, say, sulfur here, just to kind of give it some contrast here. So we got an ethyl, a methyl, a hydrogen, and a sulfur with a lone pair, and that's going to give him a positive formal charge. So it turns out this kind of inversion here doesn't happen with sulfur, and that lone pair, again, can be one of the four things. And so if I said, are there any chiral centers in this structure? You should totally say, yep, the sulfur is a chiral center, and this molecule is chiral. And so once again, with amine inversion, we would not define these molecules as chiral because they readily inconvert. You actually can't have one without the other at any kind of, you know, normal temperature. But not, the, not true with sulfur. With sulfur, you could totally have one enantiomer without having the other. They don't readily interconvert the way amines do. All right, so now we're going to take a look at a couple of examples of molecules that can be chiral, even though they don't have any chiral center. And the first comes up with what's called an allene. And an allene simply has this pattern of a carbon-carbon double bond with another carbon-carbon double bond butted up right next to each other. And something interesting kind of happens here. So if we kind of take a look at the process here. So if I put a carbon next to a carbon next to a carbon, and we'll put that single bond in there. But now I actually want to draw in the orbitals that are overlapping for that double bond. And so let's say I've got kind of these p orbitals right here, and we're getting a little sideways overlap between them. So the way it works is when the pi bond is in this plane, so then your other bonds coming off are in the perpendicular plane. So they're going to be in this kind of horizontal plane the way I've kind of drawn it here. So, but we've also got a double bond in this location right here as well. And if this p orbital has already been used to make this pi bond, then I can't use it again. And so instead of using the vertical p orbital, I'm going to have to use the horizontal p orbital instead. And here's where my artistry is going to really suck, and I apologize. So, and we'll have some more sideways overlap here in this horizontal plane. But now if the pi overlap is in this horizontal plane, then the other bonds will be in this perpendicular plane here instead. And so as a result here, so this is an sp2 hybridized carbon, sp hybridized carbon, sp2 hybridized carbon. And so none of these are sp3. So none of them can be a chiral center by definition. However, if you look at this though, so with these two groups being in this kind of vertical plane, the plane of the board, and these two being in the horizontal plane, if you kind of just 
cover up the middle for a second, it kind of resembles the tetrahedral shape. And as a result, that's what actually allows it to potentially be chiral. And so if you look at this molecule and its mirror image, if you kind of rotate this around to kind of try and see if they'll match up in any way, shape or form. In fact, if I just took and rotated this exactly 180 degrees out of the plane of the board, you'd find out that this methyl and this hydrogen would match up perfect right with this one. But having turned it around, this methyl group now would be in the back and that hydrogen would now be in the front and they wouldn't match here. These are non-superimposable mirror images. And so allenes have a chance of being chiral and it's not just allenes. It turns out as long, you know, you could get a big long chain, you know, of carbons that are all double bonded to each other. And as long as the number of double bonds is an even number, this is going to happen where, you know, you've got two groups in one plane and the other two on the other end in the other plane. So again, if you had an odd number of pi bonds, well, then they'd all be in the same plane. This is not going to happen. So we talk about allene, but there's some more complex systems that aren't technically allene, but you see the similar thing. And again, it just has to have an even number of pi bonds in a row like this. All right. One other thing you should note is that not all allenes are chiral like this. So, and you can kind of see this. So let's say I just take and replace this hydrogen right here with a methyl group instead. So I'll put it back in a second. So but let's just say I did this. Well, all of a sudden now what you'd find is that right down the middle of this molecule, because these two are on the horizontal plane, but right down the middle here, the only thing that would be reflected if I tried to make this a mirror plane right down the middle are these two methyl groups, because everything else lies on this horizontal line. And these are the perfect reflection of each other. And so we would call this a sigma plane. And so this molecule having an internal mirror plane, a sigma plane has to be a chiral. And so as a result, this guy would not have an enantiomer. He would be identical to his mirror image. And again, all I have to do is replace this one with a methyl group as well. And now you could totally superimpose these. You could flip this over and then you'd have to rotate it around, but you could totally superimpose all the groups. And so the idea then is for you to have an allene that ends up being chiral. So what your requirement is, is that the two groups on one side of the system have to be different from each other and the two groups on the other side have to be different. Otherwise, there's going to be an internal mirror plane. If I make both of these methyls or both of these hydrons, you'd have an internal mirror plane running right through the board instead. And so as long as these two are different from each other and these two are different from each other, even if these two are the same as these two, but different on the same side here. So that's going to be chiral and it will be different than its mirror image like we see here. Now the allene is one example of this. We'll see one other with the biphenyl. So the next example we'll see of a chiral molecule that does not have any chiral centers is part of what we call the biphenyl system. And biphenyl just means you have two benzene rings directly bonded to each other. So in this case, we call the position right next to where they're bonded to each other, the ortho position. So there's four of these ortho positions, two on each ring. And the key is this, the single bond is not part of the ring and it's just free to spin. These are just free to rotate around in circles relative to each other, unless you do one thing. If, you, these, if these four ortho positions are just little tiny hydrogens, great, no big deal. But the moment you start putting bigger groups in these four places, they're gonna start bumping into each other. And so it causes two things. One, it causes them to just not wanna spin around. So they'd kinda like act as little paddles and they'd hit each other and then you'd go back 90 degrees that way and hit another one. And, and so it keep them from spinning around like we'll see in this case here. So, but it does something else as well. Uh, in addition, not spinning around entirely, it makes them not even want to be in the same plane. It makes one want to be kind of in the vertical plane and the other one kind of rotate around to being in the horizontal plane. And I've kind of tried to represent that here. So in fact, I should have made this a little bit of wedged looking as well. So, and so this one's in the horizontal plane on both sides, and then these are in the vertical plane. So, and because of the ortho positions all having large groups, they just kind of want to sit there. They'll rotate a little bit, but they can't rotate 360 for sure. And they'd prefer to be orthogonal to each other, these rings, 90 degrees apart. All right. So a couple things need to happen for this to be chiral. So it turns out these two are mirror images of each other, and they're non-superimposable. And there's no chiral centers. All the atoms 
in the benzene rings, so these all these carbons are sp2 hybridized, and being that they're not sp3, they can't be chiral centers. And so without chiral centers, these are still chiral molecules because they're not identical to their mirror images. If you built these models out, you'd find out that you can't line everything up perfectly. If you took this and flipped it around to match things up, you'd find out that this methyl and this methyl would line up perfectly, this bromine and this bromine would line up perfectly. But once you flip this around, then the bromine, instead of being out towards the front and the methyl in the back, it would have the bromine in the back and the methyl out toward the front, and they would not be the same molecule at all. So these are enantiomers. These molecules are chiral in this case. And again, two requirements. You've got to have four things in these ortho positions, at least three out of the four that are bigger than hydrogen. So not actually all four, but three out of four bigger than hydrogen. And the two things on each ring have to be different from each other. So similar to what we saw at one end of allene, the two things had to be different that were attached to that sp2 carbon. Same thing here, the two things on a benzene ring have to be different from each other. Because the moment you put you know, like a methyl here and a methyl here, you'd have a mirror plane right down the horizontal again, just like we saw with allene. And any, any molecule that's got that internal mirror plane, that sigma plane is achiral. It would be identical to its mirror image. So as long as this ring's two groups and the ortho positions are different, and these ones are different from each other, even if it's the same two on this ring and this ring, as long as they're different on each individual ring, it will be chiral and it will be different than its mirror image. Cool, so these are enantiomers. So, and again, this comes up in both contexts. Sometimes they'll give you this and, and, and totally expect you to identify this molecule as chiral, but sometimes they'll go through and just kind of get a little bit tricky on you and they'll give you this molecule and a lot of students will see this and be like, oh yeah, we studied something special with the biphenyls. Yeah, that's one of those exceptions. He's going to be chiral. Well, in this case, because the ring's got two identical groups, it wouldn't be chiral, it'd be achiral. So just keep in mind, they can ask it to you either way and now it's back to being chiral. Now, if this looks completely unfamiliar, there's about a 50-50 chance. Half of undergraduates will see these examples and half won't. So if it looks completely unfamiliar, just double check your curriculum and see, did we even cover this in my class? So, cause maybe you didn't. So, but if you've benefited from this lesson, please consider giving me a like and a share. One of the best things you can do to support the channel. And if you're looking for practice materials or the study guides that go with this, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.